rhythm, timing, and feel. In these next sections, we're going to talk about getting in time with your horse's feet on the ground. We're going to practice how to walk with your horse's front feet so that you're in time with them. We're going to practice walking with your horse's hind feet as well. We'll show you how to do a slight skip step or a half step so when you get out of time that you can get back into time so that you can meet the rhythm of your horse because your horse's tempo or the speed is always going to be changing. From there we'll go to some patterns, circles, squares in both directions and take on some cones so you'll be serpentining a little bit. We'll take what you've known from that and do a little bit of trot work, a little bit of lope work, and then take it out into the real world. Practice staying in time with your horse's feet as you're going uphill and downhill. All very practical things that you can do which will put you in time with your horse's feet so that in the next section we can go ahead and turn this knowledge into riding knowledge so that you can start cueing your horse with the proper footfall sequence. Get in time with your horse's front feet. You can see that Katie and I are twins separated at birth. Both of our feet have a uh, <laughs> red wrap and a white wrap. And the goal of getting in time with your horse's feet is to walk exactly in time first with your horse's four quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to watch her feet. I'm going to just step away from her a little bit. I'm going to walk a simple square. Here we go, sweetie. And she's going to step red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. And now I'm going to go ahead and make a little turn and I have to compensate my rhythm because as she turns, she's going to short stride and long stride, shorter and long, because what she's doing is she's balancing on her right leg, which is the red, and then turning with her left. And as horses walk, they don't have a lot of flexibility in their four quarters, and so it's going to help you to sort of flat foot your walk. Walk like a zombie. I'm just peeking over my shoulder, to make sure that I'm walking in time with my horse. And of course, it helps if I can rhythmically talk at the same time, because it's a little bit like rubbing your tummy and patting your head. And I'm doing it perfectly, because Katie and I are twins, and we were separated at birth. Red, white, good girl. So that is what we're looking for. Next, I'm going to go ahead and walk with my horse's hind quarter and, uh, and do the same thing. And now practice with your horse's hind feet. So I've gone ahead and switched the wraps on both of our feet. I've switched the red to my left leg now and the same for her because really we want to keep an eye on the diagonal at the different gates. So as I ask Katie to move off, again, I need to keep track of the white and the red and the white and the red. White, red, white, red, white, red, white, red. Good girl. And if I can send her out just a little bit farther, then it makes it easier for me. And again, I'm just stepping in time with those legs. And what I want you to notice is when you are walking with your horse, you're going to find that it's much easier to walk heel to toe with your horse's hind legs because your horse has so much more flexibility in the back than they do in the front. In the front, it's going to help you to walk a bit like a zombie, as I said earlier. But when you're walking in the, with the back legs, feel free to walk to heel to toe, heel to toe. Again, I'm just going right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. And you can also get out of time, do a little half step. Oops, I didn't quite do it. And now we'll be out of step. And a half step, and then get back into it. So practice getting in time and out of time with your horse. Good girl. Practicing your half step, or your skip step. I like to call it a half step because cowboys generally don't like to skip. So what is going to happen constantly as you're practicing this is you're going to get out of time with your horse. So what you want to do is practice getting back into time with your horse by making a half step. 
And you want to practice getting out of time with your horse as well, because that will put you in closer time with your horse's back feet. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and ask Katie to move off again. Here we go, sweetie. Let's go. Oh, she went with her white. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, white. And as I practice my half step, what I'm going to do is go half, and now I'm going opposite of my horse. So as her red foot is moving, then my white foot is going forward. And to get back in time with it again, I'm going to go half step, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, half step, right, there we go, and now I'm opposite again. So as she's walking with her red, I'm walking with my white, and I'm going to make another half step, white, red, white, red, white, red, good girl. So I'm going to practice that half step without Katie for a moment, so you can just get a sense for what it is. As I'm doing my half step, and this again is uh, what you want to practice so that you can get back in time with your horse's feet, is as I'm walking, instead of taking a full step with my white, I'm going to go here and then a quick red one again. So I'm going to go here and then continue on my step. And you should be able to do it with both feet, so I'm going to do half step with my red and then go this way. And now I'll stop, turn around, and then walk again. I'm going to half step with my red, so I just go to my white, but then continue walking normally. I'm going to half step with my red, so my feet just simply meet, and then I continue on with normal walking. One more time in the opposite direction. I'm going to half step with my white, so I go here, and then again off with my red. I'm going to half step with the white, and then continue on. And you'll need to be able to do that uh, fairly comfortably, and it will make more sense when you are walking in time with your horse. Practicing on a circle with the forelegs. So I'm going to go ahead and just ask Katie to walk off, and again I'm going to go white, red. So I'm being mindful of which foot she steps first. And this exercise will certainly be easier if you've worked through our groundwork exercises. I'm going to try to push her away from me, go away, but still keeping my, now even if she trots, there we go, you can still continue marching. Here she's just taking too many steps, so I'm going to kind of catch white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red. This again is really good practice because as you are riding your horse, you want to cue the turns when that white leg is in the air, and you'll want to press your horse off of your leg when that white leg is on the ground, as long as we're going in this direction. Now there I missed a step or two, and so I just did a couple of little shuffle steps to get back in time. You're going to mess up constantly, especially as you're concentrating on keeping an eye on things. The other thing that I would say is really listen to your horse's feet as you're doing these exercises. Good girl. I'm going to ask her to go in the opposite direction. Oh. Here we go. We're going to go red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Good girl. And get used to being able to look at your horse but not be so focused on your horse that your body is turned in to your horse. And as I'm doing this, you're going to see that when I start to lose Katie's rhythm, because her tempo changes, then I start talking in rhythm with her feet because I'm concentrating. Good girl, Katie. And then I'm going to go ahead and slow her down, drag my feet, and let her come in. Good girl. Another reason that it's very helpful to walk circles in time with your horse's feet is if you feel as though your horse is lame, you can start to mimic which foot they are uh, limping on, just like human beings. If this leg is sore, you put your weight here, 
So you're catching your weight there, and that oftentimes can be very helpful when you're dealing with your farrier or with your veterinarian to say which leg seems to be ailing. And now the circle with your hind leg. So I'm going to ask Katie to walk off. So again, we're going to go white leg, red, left leg, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red. And you're going to try not to concentrate on those front legs right now. Good girl. So just be very mechanical. Try to match when your horse stabs their foot into the ground. Match that. And get a sense for what it feels like. I'm going to go ahead and do a circle in the opposite direction. Good girl. And here we go. So it's right leg, left leg. Now another thing that really will help you with your back legs is when that white leg hits the ground, you can see that's when the foreleg is leaving. So it goes white and then the foreleg goes. White leg hits and the foreleg goes. So really the time for you to cue your horse is when that white leg hits the ground right there. Right there. Right there. That's when the foreleg is in the air. There. And there. So look at the hind leg as you're working your horse. There. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. There, and that's when I'm giving my hand a little squeeze. Just the smallest little squeeze. Good girl. Hey. Walking the square with the forelegs. Now that we've done the circle, I'm going to go ahead and ask Katie to move off. She's going to step red, white, red, white. And it's going to take a step or two for us to kind of work into a square, red, white, red, white. Even as she speeds up, I try to keep my rhythm. Get away from me. And if she trots, big deal. Good girl. We're going to talk about the trot in just a little while. And so what I want her to do is make that turn and then walk a straight line. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, right, red, white red, white. And what I want you to notice is that on the corners, I am marching in place with her, but my feet are not moving. White, red, 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 red, white, red, white. Now when you get really good, feel free to stop your feet. But look at those feet, ready? Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. You have to keep going, but I don't. Ha ha. And red, white, red, white, red, white. I'm going to stop my feet. But I'm still looking. Look at that. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. This time I'm going to march through it. And I'm going to ask her to change direction, so I'm going to back up. No need to look at my feet at the moment, but as soon as she changes direction, red, white, red, white, red, white. Again, she should be moving, finishing this little quarter circle. Red, white, white, red, white. Another thing that you'll need to do is I would urge you to say out loud, red, white, red, white. Learn how to breathe inward as you're saying white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, white, red, white, red, because you'll lose your breath and you'll lose your rhythm. And again, Katie keeps changing her tempo as she's going around the corners, as she goes straight, as she slows down, and I have to make these adjustments. And these are all things that you'll do in the saddle as well you will start to feel your horse slowing down or speeding up and you will be able to re react more quickly. Good girl. As she comes in, red, white, red. And now the square while practicing with your horse's hind legs. Here we go. So I'm going to ask Katie to move off. And again, I'm going to think, you know, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, White, red, oh boy. And we're just going to get her off. Get out there. Make a square for me, please. All right. And as I mentioned 
in the circle section, the time for you to give a little squeeze of your hand is when the inside leg hits the ground. So when that red leg hits, squeeze your hand. Squeeze your hand. Because when that red leg hits, that is when the foreleg is leaving. It's leaving now. It's leaving now. Good girl. And I'm still going to walk. And I'm going to squeeze now. And now. And now. Good girl. And now I'm not squeezing. If anything, I'm just pushing her away with my rope a little bit. And when the red leg hits, which is right now, now I'm squeezing my left hand. Good girl. So it's so important to get in time with your horse's feet, both the front and the backs. As she makes this square again, the time to cue is now. When that white leg hits the ground, it's now. Squeeze. Cue. Good girl. Cue. 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 Of course, you are going to be practicing your walking and cue. So I'm stepping every time my right leg hits the ground when hers does, I'm squeezing my right hand. White leg. Cue. Cue. And remember, you're influencing the forequarter as you're cueing. It's just the timing is established right there. Right there. Good girl. So it's important to be <laughs> in time with your horse's forelegs but also the back legs, because the back legs are really telling you when to cue. Get and develop your eye for the way your horse moves on the ground, so that when you start riding, this all makes so much more sense. Oh, you're being so nice, you are. Now try a figure eight. I'm gonna go ahead and ask Katie to move off. Um, and uh, red, white, red. Here we go, each time we start a new pattern, I have to kind of push her off a little bit red, white. I'm going to have her do a circle in this direction again. And she's saying, do you want me to trot? And I'm saying, not really, if you could just keep moving. Oh, and I've just lost my step. Red, white, red. Oh, I've lost it again. Red, white, red, white, red, white. And now I'm going to head off in the opposite direction. Trying to keep control of my rhythm. Again, every time you hear me talking rhythmically like that, it means I'm concentrating on my feet while concentrating on hers at the same time. So here we go. This again is going to mimic as you're riding. What human beings do is we balance and we turn. We balance and we turn. We balance and we turn. And that is what horses do as well. It's just that their spine is a vertical I'm sorry, it's a horizontal spine, whereas human beings have a vertical spine. Oh no, I've almost lost my rhythm. And I'm going to again go in the opposite direction, so I'm going to push her nose over. And feel your own body, how you balance and then you turn. You balance and you lean into your turn. This is what horses need to do for their balance as well. You're really just trying to get your horse's nose to tail to follow their spine so that the feet are directly under the spine. There we go. Good girl. Which allows your horse to be in balance. When your horse is swinging its head around, if you're not taking care of that with your reins and your leg to say, hey, you need to straighten out or just slightly bend, you're giving your horse hints as to what you're doing. And the more that you can keep those feet nice and calm underneath your horse's spine, the better communication you have with your horse and the more your horse will relax into what you're asking for. Cones. Once you've worked your circle and your square and uh, a figure eight, go ahead and, and work some cones. And be gentle with yourself to start out with because now you're starting to change the bend of your horse quite often and you need to, of course, work out your own weight and footfall and with your horses. So again, I'm going to try to Look at her feet, and I'm going to go, which, where's she going to step? Oh, it's red. White, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Here we go. As we're going around the first cone, I'm turning her as the white leg is in the air. But now, as she's going to go this way, I'm going to ask her to turn her head now. Now. And now we're at the white cone, and now. So we want to influence the leg in the direction of travel. So we're going to go with the red leg, red leg. It's in the air. Press her over now. 
now, and I'm really going so slow. Red, red, and I'm gonna go through and do this again. And I'm listening to her feet often because I don't always want to be looking over my shoulder. Red, white, red, turn, red, turn, red, turn, and now it switches. So it's white, turn, white, turn, white, turn. So the red hits, turn, the red hits, turn, good girl. So when the red leg is in the air, we're turning, we're turning, we're turning. And it's ever so slight that I'm just pressing her over an inch or two at the most because again, in the front, horses walk like zombies. They simply don't have a lot of range. So I'm just trying to influence this white foot to step over two inches. Step over an inch or two. Step over an inch or two. Now, now, now. And now I want the red leg to step over just a little bit so that your feet can follow your spine. Good girl. And now the white leg, get ready. And now, and now. Ever so gently pulling her head towards the white and now to the red. Push her head to the red. Push it gently. Push it gently. Push it gently. Oh, I had to slow down so much right there. Good girl, Katie. And we're coming to a halt. Step, step. So the goal of this, these exercises are to stay with the fours, but remember, when you switch it, you'll have to do your little skip step or your half step in order to get in time with those fours again. And as you start riding, when we get to the riding section, we'll talk a little bit more about the hindquarters um, and how they're being affected at each gate as well, because it will be different from walk to trot to lope or canter. Yielding off of the leg on the ground. So we're going to work now with a little exercise to show you what you should be doing in the saddle, but we're going to do it on the ground. And you can see that in camera B, which is you right there. There's a straight line going from that cone to that cone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around that cone and press Katie off of the pressure of, in this case, her white leg. So each time her white leg hits the ground, I'm just gently going to push her over, which is what your leg would do if you are working in time with your horse. So first thing I'm going to do is ask her to walk off. I'll get my rope ready. And I will say that for each of these exercises today, we have not done any practice at all with me or with Katie. So she is just doing these things live as we go. Again, I am walking red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Now as I come through here, each time that that white leg hits, press, 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 press. So each time that red leg is going over, I'm pressing her over ever so slightly. Now, when you're riding, you will also allow your reins to help you a little bit. You can give a little half halt, or Western riders will say you can check your horse each step. So as you're pressing your leg, your reins are controlling the bend of your horse. But what I'm not doing is just turning your nose to the right. I'm telling your nose, I want you to stay with me here. Keep your nose towards me and press and press, press. So see how she's stepping over and see if I stay in time with her, press, press, release. Good girl. Then I actually have the leverage to press into her. Again, as I'm walking forward and not looking at her feet, I'm listening for her feet. Good girl. This time I'm going to try to do it incorrectly. So I'm going to do a half step and be out of time with her. And now, as she's stepping with that white foot, I'm going to try to press. Oh my gosh. And I can do it, but I don't really have as much Leverage, whereas if I get in time with her now, I can really press her over for each step. Oh, we're in sync. We're dancing, me and Katie. Oh, Katie, we're dancing. Another reason why you want to get in time with your feet so that you can start doing your fancy maneuvers, yielding off of the leg, 
differentiating that from the leg yield, the true leg yield, and some of these other maneuvers like shoulder in, haunches in. Get in time with your horse's feet. It's so helpful if you can do it on the ground. Otherwise, it all seems such a mystery. The disengage. Now I've set up Katie with just two wraps. Again, however, I've got a red wrap on her foreleg and a white wrap on her hind inside leg. And that is the leg which is going to disengage. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what the hind quarter is going to look like here. I have my one white wrap. And as Katie is making the circle, this white leg is going to step over her other hind leg. And then her other leg will go over here. And this is the disengage. It's the crossing over that really shuts down the horse or helps them to stretch, however we would like to think about that. So what I don't want to see when people are disengaging is horses sort of, you know, scrambling around like this. The disengage is the white leg crossing. The reason that I have the red wrap there is because the leg sequence at the walk would go white leg and then the foreleg without the wrap and then the opposite side. So after this red leg takes its step and hits the ground, the next step is that white leg, which is the time for you to ask for the disengage with your rein, or in this case, your rope. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get my rope organized in such a manner. And I'm going to ask Katie to move off. And again, as she goes red, red, that's my time to go red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. So I'm really influencing that white leg, white, red, white. So when the white leg is in the air, that's when I want to give just a little bit of a pull, and it is a pull and a release. So if I try to do that with my hand, if this is Katie's uh, leg in the air, I'm saying press and then release, pull and release. I'm not pulling and then dropping. I'm giving her some support to say, I want you to step, but now go ahead and relax, step and relax. So that is what you're looking for, and as you're on your horse, and we'll talk about this in the riding section next, um, you want to be able to put some pressure on and take it off on your rein as you need it, as you get more focused on your horse's footfall. Now I've taken off all of the wraps except for the white, <laughs> including my legs, and uh, so you can just get a sense for, for the white leg, which is stepping under. And you need not get confused with the, the red leg. But again, I'm going to go ahead and get everything organized. I want to have a little bit of contact on my rope. And then I'm going to spin here. And as she starts to move, again, I'm going to go, white leg is in the air now. It's right now. And now. Good girl. Now. And now. And now. And now. Pull release. And pull release. And pull release. Good girl. We'll do just another step or two so she looks nice in the camera. Good girl. All right. So it is about the timing to influence the leg that you want. The more that you can work with your horse's feet, both the forequarters and the hindquarters, the more it will make sense to you when you're riding as well. Good girl, sweetie. And you can see that she's just relaxing into this. She's not upset by it. When you're doing it calmly like this, it really is helping her to stretch and stretch. And of course, you would want to do it on the opposite side as well. But for time constraints, we're just going to do one side. The trot. So go ahead and you don't have to necessarily use a longer line, but you're going to start doing some transitions from the walk to the trot. And I'm going to kind of move her out just a little bit. Come on. Each time that we start, oh, come on. Good girl. And again, look at those feet and think red, white, red, white, white, red, white. And maybe I'll work on a little square here. And I'm going to go ahead and ask her to trot. And I will wait until everyone can see everybody's feet. Red, white, red, white, and red, white, 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 red, white. Walking. So you don't have to change the rhythm. You must change the tempo. So again, it's still going red, white, 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 walk, white, red. Good girl. So you, as you are handling and doing these transitions, want to start 
<laughs> I'm concentrating on her feet. You need to concentrate on adjusting your tempo. Good girl. So I'm just doing a slightly faster march. I'm not running fast. If anything, I just need to make a smaller square. Good girl. And again, as she's making a square, I want to influence the white leg. So when I want to say, look, you're going to turn now, now, now. Good girl. Turn, turn, turn as the white leg is in the air. White leg, white leg, white leg. You can't see that I'm doing anything. Oops, I've lost myself. Red, white, red, white. Because I'm doing the slightest little squeeze with my hand. Up, oh, red, white, red, white, red, white. As we get here, squeeze, squeeze, the white leg, the white leg. Good girl. White leg, white leg. White leg, white leg. Good girl. White leg, white leg. And if I can stay with her, all the better. Again, as she transitions, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red. And she's just listening to my voice as I start to say red, white, red, white. I'm saying it more slowly and more relaxed, and she's reacting to that. That's why she's changing. I'm not doing anything fantastic there. Again, at the trot in both directions, you'll want to keep up with your horse's feet. I'm a little bit out of breath. You're going to have to work just a little bit. But the goal is, if you've done our other groundwork exercises and worked these patterns, you'll know that you can make a smaller circle or square as your horse is making the larger one. The lope or the canter. Again, we differentiate the lope. If you're using a western saddle, it's called a lope. If you are riding in an English saddle or a dressage saddle, it's called a canter. Argue amongst yourselves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the lope looks like. If you think the half step or the skip step is a little embarrassing, well, here we go. This is the lope, and this is what you're going to do. So, as your horse is walking and trotting and they start to lope, this is the lead that they're on. So we're going to get Katie to do a nice left lead, and that's what's happening. And I want you to do that. In the opposite direction, if I turn this way, and the horse would be on their right lead, in this case the right foreleg would be forward, you would again do this constant sort of skipping, and that's what you want to keep track of as you are working your horse on the ground. Now you need not always dance with your horse, and your horses may flip out a little bit when you first start jumping around like a crazy person, but they will get used to it. They really shouldn't be surprised when you are doing things like spinning a rope and you know, all of this kind of stuff, good girl, and I throw it up over, like, that shouldn't bother her. It shouldn't bother her that I'm making strange movements. Um, it's good for your horse. Here we go. So, good girl. And, again, I can get in time with her feet right away, or I can kind of wait until she loves, and we'll see how well I do here. All right, so we'll uh, see if we can get a trot. And, again, I'm going to try to get her to trot without losing my, there's my trot, good girl. Red, white, red, white. Okay, so as she goes out further, again, I can cue as the white leg is in the air. And as she goes around, I will go ahead and ask her. Good girl. And there's my lope. So again, the red and the white hit now. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white. Good girl, Katie. And then as she's gonna trot, Trot. Hey, I got it. And maybe just uh, do one more transition. So again, every time that you get distracted by adjusting your rope, doing whatever you need to do, you may fall your, find yourself out of time. Here we go. Good girl. Again, red, white, red, white, red, white. That is the left lead. Good girl. Trot. Oh, thought she was going to trot. There it is. And again, she's really listening to my feet as I'm doing this as well. She's being sweet as can be. Good girl, come on in. Now, my advice to you as you are doing your loping 
Again, when you are looking at your horse's feet, making sure, number one, that they are on, on the correct lead. Secondly, that they're on the correct lead on both ends, so that they're four, in this case, when they're on their left lead, their foreleg is leading, and on the hind quarter on the inside, the foreleg or the hind quarter is leading as well. If they're not, they are cross-firing, or in some cases called forging, um, which we'll go ahead and have a little clip after this about the difference between a proper lope and when a horse is cross-firing. So if you can get in time with your horse's feet and really look at them, pay attention to them, and mimic them, these are going to be the things that are going to help you as you get into the saddle and uh, need to increase your timing. Good girl, Katie. Oh, now I'm really out of breath. Now that you've done your work in the arena, it's certainly okay and desirable that you start working your horses going uphill, downhill, everywhere you're moving your horse, you can practice walking in time with their feet. So I'm going to go ahead and walk up this hill here, and I'm going to walk in time with my horse's forelegs first, but I want to switch to be with my horse's hind legs. So I'm going to go ahead and do my little half step, and walk and push as my horse is pushing up with its hind quarter. So the hind quarter is stepping right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So as you're going uphill, you want to feel that when you're riding and when you're walking. And now that I'm at the top, I'm going to go ahead and switch my feet. So now I'm walking with my horse's four quarters. Turn and turn and turn, step, turn, step. Turn, and now as we go downhill, I'm going to stay in time with my horse's forequarter. So I am simply stepping in time with my horse's forequarter. Katie is really catching her weight. Now, 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 now. Left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left. And now as we make our turn, he's balancing and turning. She's balancing, turning. Good girl. So don't feel like you just practice these things in the arena. Every time you grab your horse, you're going out a gate, you can disengage their hindquarter. You're walking in a straight line to take them to groom them or put the saddle on. Walk in time with their forequarter. Walk in time with their hindquarter. As you're doing your warm-ups, warm keep an eye on those legs. It tells you if your horse is feeling healthy, if they look like they're a little lame. Uh, these are all the things that not only help your horsemanship, but they're going to help your uh, rhythm, timing, and feel as you're riding as well. Rhythm, timing, and footfall. In the first section, we talked about the importance of getting in time with your horse's feet doing groundwork. And we put some wraps on both my legs and Katie's legs here. Talked about moving different, moving your horse on different patterns while trying to walk not only with your horse's front legs, but with your horse's hind legs as well. So again, even though my horse is moving right now and I'm standing still, I'm marching in place so that I don't move, lose the rhythm and tempo of my horse's front legs. In this section, we are going to talk about riding and steering, staying in time with those feet, so that you would be cueing now, when that white leg is in the air now, when it's in the air now, and straightening her as that red leg goes forward. Good girl. We're going to talk about the difference in steering your horse when that white leg is on the ground and when it's in the air. When it's in the air, that is when you are steering. You're subtly asking your horse to move over just an inch or two at a step. When it's on the ground, that is the proper time to yield your horse off of your leg, which should not be confused with your true leg yield which you can look at other sections that we have on the site and the DVDs about that. Oh, I've lost my timing. White, red, white, red. We're also going to talk about timing at the trot. We'll talk about, oh, I've lost my timing again. Good girl. Red, white. At the trot, we're going to talk about the importance of posting in time, talking about cueing when you are sitting, when to cue when you're standing. We're going to talk about how to Pick up that proper post lead, good girl. Also talking about at the trot, what to do when the inside leg is in the air and when it's on the ground. It'd be very similar to at the walk in that 
When it's in the air, you are subtly cueing your horse to turn. When that white leg in this direction is on the ground, that would be the time to push your horse over off of your leg. And we will also talk just a little bit about the lope or the canter and the timing. Your timing at the lope and canter is not nearly as important as at the walk or at the trot. And the reality is that your lope or your canter is such a quick gait that uh, it's important to try to stay in time, but it is not nearly as important as the walk. The walk is the mother of all gaits. Off we go to the riding. Four leg in the air at the walk. In this section, we're going to talk about steering, in this case, while Katie's white inside leg is in the air. And every time that it's in the air would be the time that I would cue to ask her just to move that left leg over just a little bit. Good girl. Now, I have uh, lots of different colors right now. You can see I've got a red wrap and a white wrap. And then I have different colored reins. I've got a blue rein on my outside, an orange rein on my inside. So my orange rein here, will be, I'll be squeezing my hand now as that white leg is in the air. And I'm giving just the slightest little squeeze of my hand. And I can ever so gently influence that leg as it's in the air. When I finish my turn at the square, I could also give a slight squeeze of my blue rein as the red leg is in the air. So it's white, and then white, and now red. Good girl. And that tells her that we're steering, we're steering, now we're going straight. Here we go. And I'm going to say we're steering, we're steering, one more steer step, and now red. Good girl. And this allows her just to relax on the straightaway on my squares. Now it does not matter to me how exactly you're steering. In our steering segments, we talk about the difference between your direct rein, which is what I'm doing here with my two reins. We talk about the inside-outside rein, where when you lock your inside rein, now my blue rein becomes my steering rein. So instead of squeezing my orange rein, I'm going to lay this on her neck every time that, that white leg is in the air. So now, now, and now just a little bit to the outside with my blue rein. So there's your inside-outside rein. Again, if you're, uh, if you're doing dressage or your hands are much quieter, you need not move your hands out quite so much. I'm doing the same thing right now with my hands directly in front of me. Good girl. Or if you prefer just to neck rein, again, with a loose rein, it would be turning. So I'm going to rhythmically lay that rein on her neck and now straight back to go straight. Good girl. So when that white leg is in the air, that is my time to lay the rein on the neck. Hey, we're turning now. If you can lean into your turn now, if you can lean in now, but now we're going to go straight. Good girl. So when that leg is in the air, that is your time to cue. At the walk, you have a slightly longer time that you have to cue. And uh, as you progress through your gates, the trot and the lope or the canter, then the time that you have to cue is much, much quicker. So you must be patient at the walk. You only want to cue for a turn when that leg is in the air. The inside leg on the ground while at the walk. This time, I'm going to steer Katie on the very same square. But I'm going to start using the inside leg, not necessarily when it's in the air, for my turn I'm going to. But as I approach the walls, or my next turn here, I'm going to use my inside leg to press when now that white leg hits the ground. So as I turn, it's now, it's in the air now, it's in the air now, but now I'm going to say, ready, press over now, and now, and now. Good girl. And now I get to the turn, I see it's in the air now, in the air now, white leg's in the air, and now as it hits the ground there, press my leg, press my leg, press. Press. Good girl. And what you want to do as a rider is look at your horse's shoulders. You can see them moving forward, the right outside one, now the inside. Outside one, go inside one. You can see the shoulders moving forward. And you need not stare down at your horse all the time. You can just peripherally look down, kind of at your horse's ears, and I can see my horse's shoulders move forward. The other thing is when you get in time with your horse, 
the tempo is not going to change that much, so you can start hearing it. So again, I'm turning, but now as that white leg hits the ground, which is right there, press, press over, press over, and now, good girl, but now it's in the air, so turn. And now turn, and now turn, and for now I'm going to just wait a step, and it's going to go there. Press my leg now, good girl, now. And that makes a lot of sense to her. Now I am holding with my reins just a little bit of bend to the inside, meaning that I'm kind of switching back and forth now between my direct rein, my inside outside rein, even my neck reining. So as I come through here, if I want a neck rein, I'll put my reins in my left hand. When the leg is in the air, we're turning. Feel the rein against the neck, good girl. Feel it against the neck, okay, and now as the white leg hits, we're moving over. So I can steer my horse straight off my leg, rather than yanking her forward in the mouth. Get ready, turning as the white leg is in the air. Now, and now, and now as it hits right there, press my leg, press my leg. Good girl, press my leg. I'm not using my reins at all right now. Here we go, and we're turning, and turning, and turning. And now you just wait a beat there. Pressing, pressing. You can give a little half halt, meaning I'm pulling my reins back, and now it's gonna be in the air. We're turning, we're turning, we're turning. Good girl. For your horse, the difference between the leg in the air and the leg on the ground means the world. The more that you can get in time with those two things, the more clear you are in your communication with your horse. It's very important that when you're at the walk, you be patient and watch those shoulders moving forward. You can deduce where the hind legs are by watching the shoulders move forward. But for right now, it's easiest if you work off your horse's forequarters because you have a visual point of reference. Halting in time with your horse's feet. Good girl, Katie. This time I'm going to walk my square and I'm going to come to a halt a couple of times. Remember, we're steering when the leg is in the air, when it's in the air, when the air, I can straighten her when the red one is in the air, there we go. And. Um, Mostly we've been concentrating on the white leg, when it's in the air and when it is on the ground. And now I want to talk about that red foreleg on the outside. When that leg hits the ground, that is when I'm going to have you right now practice giving your halt as the red leg hits the ground. And you're going to be very light about it because you're not asking for a stomp down halt. You're going to say, look, I want you to slow down your step, slow down your step, Slow down and then come to a halt. Good girl. So it should take two or three squeezes with your hands. And if you're yanking like this, then it's too much. You don't want to see your horse's head raise. You want them to understand that you're talking to them very rhythmically. Now, what this does is when you can start asking when that foreleg hits the ground, is it's going to ever so gently straighten your horse each step that is your goal with your reins as well, so that your horse can come in and stand more square and firm in their step. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Good girl, Katie. I'm gl glad to hear Katie blowing out and relaxing. Good girl. And we're turning. And we're turning. And we'll do a little straighten. Now, when I'm initially asking a horse to slow down, then I'm asking only with the outside leg. So I'm doing every other step, if you think about uh, the way the fours are moving. So I would be saying, look, I want you to now, to now, and then finally halt. If I feel like my hor horse is moving a little bit too quickly, I may go ahead and switch and give a little half halt each step. So I would go half halt, half halt, half halt, half halt. So it's okay to go each step, but your goal is to start with the outside, which again will get your horse to start slowing down. Now eventually you're going to want to move these half halts in time with your horse's hind quarter. But for this section of the riding, we're going to talk about the four quarters only. You will in the future be able to deduce where your horse's hind feet are. But if you're just starting out trying to get in time with your horse's feet, again, you want the visual point of reference of your shoulders. So in this case, when you're asking for your halt, you're asking for several half halts. So you're saying, slow down a little bit, slow down a little bit. Okay, now go ahead and halt. And this is gonna, again, allow your horse to step into square and have a relaxed stance at the halt instead of feeling like they are yanked and jerked into a halt. You're not looking for sliding stops, you're looking for a balanced halt.
trot versus the walk. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Katie to walk. The walk is a four beat gait, meaning that Katie is walking <clears throat> with her left, left, and then right, right. Left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. There are four steps to the walk. It's just commonly referred to as a four beat gait. The trot, on the other hand, is a two beat gait and the horse is going to work on opposite diagonals. So as I'm asking for my transition, I want to squeeze when that red leg hits the ground. So I'm going to start squeezing both legs at the same time. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Good girl. And right now I'm going to go ahead and just sit this trot. And as we come around and I'm going to ask for my transition downward, it will be just like the halt segment where I'm going to ask as that outside red leg hits the ground. Now I know that maybe some people will say, no, no, you must ask as the inside or the uh, hind legs hit the ground and that's fine. You can work up to that. If you're just getting used to timing and rhythm and footfall, we're just going to work off the fours right now. So again, as you ask for your transition to the trot from your walk, you want to time it as that outside foreleg is hitting the ground. When the red leg hits, that's when you're going to start your squeeze because the next leg to fall is the inside hind leg. So again, it goes red and then the inside leg. And so when you're at the top of your squeeze with your legs, you're telling your horse's feet, hey, that's the one I want you to push off on for the trot. That's what gives your horse that nice balanced trot. So as I come around again, I'm going to say it hits right now. And I'm going to squeeze now. I'm going to squeeze, release, squeeze, release. There we go. Good girl. So we get a nice balanced, easy going trot. Slow down. There we go. And I'm also going to ask my horse to transition downward as that outside foreleg hits the ground as well. Again, you're asking your horse to transition down slowly. You're asking them to slow down, slow down, slow down, and then finally transition. So you get a balanced transition rather than a big yank down. Again, one more time asking for the transition, which is going to go squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Good girl. We're going to miss the cone, maybe. Good girl. We hit it. And as we come around, half halt, half halt. Good girl. The trot, again, is a two-beat gait, so your horse is moving off of the diagonal. There is also a diagonal at your lope or your canter, which is very important to let your horse know when you get to that point of that transition which diagonal you want to stay on the ground. Good girl. Leg in the air at the trot. I'm going to go ahead and ask Katie to move off on this square again, and we are going to talk about that leg in the air, the white leg in the air. And that is, again, the time that you can give your slight cue for a turn. And you're going to find at the trot that the cue that you give, you get a lot more turn power for the correct cue. At the walk, you pretty much have to give a cue each and every step. So as I'm going to come around, I'm going to push her over. I'm going to say, ready, we're going to turn, and as the white leg is in the air, good girl. But now we're going to ask for that trot as the red leg hits the air, squeeze both legs, squeeze both legs, squeeze, kick, kick, good girl, and we're going to keep her moving. Now, again, you can keep your eyes on your horse's shoulders, and I can tell that the red hits, red, red. When the red hits, I know that the white leg is in the air. So. That is your time to cue. Now, now, now. Good girl. I'm giving simply a little squeeze with my orange rein every time that white leg is in the air. Good girl. And again, when I want my transition, when the red hits, now, now. Good girl. I can feel her slowing down. I gave her a little cluck cluck right after the transition to say, hey, we're still going to walk. Very nice. Good girl. So as you are cueing at the trot, and I'm right now using a sitting trot, we're going to have a segment about the posting trot in just a few segments. But as you are sitting, 
then again you can feel your saddle moving from right to left you can take a quick look at those shoulders so when you know that that outside leg is hitting that is when that white leg is in the air if you want to watch for that inside shoulder moving forward that is fine as well uh, so whatever you need right now to worry about how to see that white leg in the air that is when you want to cue it doesn't make any difference if you're going to give a direct rein if you're going to use your inside outside rein and steer like so or if you're going to simply have a loose rein and neck rein steer girl the leg on the ground at the trot good girl all right again i'm going to ask katie to move off and just like at the walk the time to push your horse or to yield your horse off of your leg is when that white leg is on the ground so as i'm walking again a quick review when that white leg is in the air we're turning and now and now and now straighten with your red leg good girl very nice as i come through and the walk again be so patient it's in the air it's in the air but now that it's going to be on the ground there press press oh see how nicely she moves over good girl all right now i'm going to ask for my trot as the red leg hits the ground now 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 kick come on good girl all right so now i'm going to wait i'm steering when the white leg is in the ground now now I'm sorry when the white leg was in the air but now I'm going to push her over as that white leg hits the ground now 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 good girl she thought maybe I was going to ask for a a lope there good girl and again I'm doing this all sitting try right now there he's in the air 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 I'm going to gently push her over now as the white leg hits the ground now 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 easy good girl and again steering now 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 steering steering good girl and as we come around pressing 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 good girl transition transition half halt good girl there's my half halt half halt good girl so the time to press your horse off of your leg is when that white leg hits the ground Again, it's much quicker at the trot. Too much pressure might mean that your horse thinks that they want to make a transition. But for Katie right now, I'm using two legs to ask for that transition up to the lope or to the canter. So there may be some confusion in her head, but my reins will say, hey, look, I want you to slow back down. We're not doing a, an upward transition right there. I want you just to move off my leg. And on the third time, she moved over without thinking that it was a transition upward steering while posting in this segment we'll go ahead and talk about your posting trot and the timing that you need in order to steer properly so your posting of course is the act of rising and falling in time with your horse's footfall and we have segments again about posting this segment is about the footfall and the timing and the and uh, the rhythm and timing during that so just very briefly of course you're going to be standing and sitting you'll be standing and sitting and standing and sitting the time for you to actually cue for your turn at the trot is while you are sitting so you would stand and cue standing cueing standing squeezing my hand standing squeezing my hand standing squeezing my hand it's hard to do at the walk so i'm going to go ahead and ask katie to pick up her trot here as i come around and again, I'm going to say, look, your right leg is in the air. It's in the air. And as the red one hits right now, I'm squeezing. And here we go, sweetie. Ready? Good girl. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up my proper post. It's very important that you're posting properly. And each time I sit, squeeze, squeeze. Good girl. Rise, squeeze, rise, cue, rise, cue. Good girl. I'm just squeezing my inside rein. Now, now. Good girl. now 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 good girl and same thing here you can use your outside rein to steer as long as you're doing it when you're sitting steer 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 good girl and you can do the same thing with your neck reining steer 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 good girl
So the important thing there is that you should practice this rising and, and squeezing because now it all of a sudden turns into rubbing your tummy and patting your head. In that as you're rising, there is no cue, but you sit and you're squeezing. You're either squeezing your inside rein, in this case it would be my orange rein, or as I'm neck reining, again I would use a loose rein, as I'm standing and then sitting, I'm cueing, standing, sitting, standing, sitting. And same with your inside outside rein, if you're standing and then sitting, standing, sitting. So that your horse knows that when that white leg is in the air, that is the time that, uh, the only time that your horse can comfortably and balanced turn. And you must, of course, know that you are on the correct post lead. Again, this particular segment is not about getting your correct post lead, but once you know that you have it all of the time, start steering your horse rhythmically. The leg on the ground at the post. In this segment, I'm going to go ahead and post again to the trot. It's very important that even Western riders learn to post properly, so it's not just a dressage thing. When you are standing, that is when that white leg is hitting the ground. Again, assuming that you are on the correct post lead. That is the time that I would very gently press my inside leg into my horse and if need be you would give a slight half halt at the same time so that my hands would be coming back and my leg going into my horse. So I am saying, hey look I'm stopping a little bit of forward motion but pressing you sideways. So that is the yielding off of the leg, not to be confused with a leg yield. But the proper time to press, just like at the walk, is when that leg is on the ground and the time that the leg is in the ground is when you are starting to rise. So I'm going to come around the cone here, pick up my trot, and so again it's going to be squeeze, squeeze as the red leg hits the ground, good girl. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up my correct post lead. Next time I get to this spot right here, that's when I'm going to go ahead and press off my leg. And it's a little bit harder to do, quite honestly, because you're rising and then trying to gently press your inside leg into your horse. Just tighten my reins up just a little bit so I can give half halts as I need to. Come around and press, 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 press. Good girl. And then make my turn. Again, she had this just maybe thought that it was a transition, but it was not a transition. So I'm posting, I'm making sure that I'm the correct post lead. I'm going to come through and press, 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 press. Good girl. And steer as I sit. Good girl. Oh, okay. Let's try it one more time. What do you say? Squeeze, squeeze. Good girl. Right. Oh, there we go. I'm on the right post lead. I had to switch it real quick. I'm going to come through. I'm going to cue as I sit. And now press, 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 press. Good girl. That last one was the best one moving over. And we are going to definitely come to a transition right there. So again, the time to press your over off your leg is when that white leg is on the ground. If you are posting properly, it is as you are rising and it becomes difficult to twist your leg into her just a little bit. Remember, if you add just a tad bit of half halt, that is also going to get her to slow down the front a little bit. Let her know that we're not pushing into a transition. Move over, move over, move over. The lope transition or the canter transition. Again, the difference between your lope and your canter is since Katie is wearing a western saddle at the moment, it is a lope, it's a western term. If you're wearing a dressage or an English saddle, I would call it a canter. And um, the time that, that you ask for that transition is when the outside hind leg hits the ground. And it doesn't matter if it's at the walk or the trot, today we're going to just work on the trot just so you get to, to get a sense for this transition. But I know that the outside hind leg will hit the ground at the trot when the white leg hits the ground because that's the diagonal that will be used. So I'm going to go ahead and ask for my trot. So again, I'm squeezing as the red leg hits the ground right there and there. And I'm going to slap there and say, come on, we really are going good girl. And again, I can post a little bit or if you're posting and you ask for your transition, it's as you rise because you're rising as the white leg hits the ground right there, right there. That would be the time that you would squeeze, not when you sit. I'm going to come around and I'm going to pick it up at the sitting trot. But if you are posting, it is as you are rising, when you're the top, that would be the time to cue. So as she comes around, the white leg hits the ground. Now, 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 now. 
Good girl. So again, as it hits now, good girl. Good girl. If I'm rising, I'm going to try to rise as I'm squeezing. It should be now, now. Good girl. So at your lope and your canter, you're deducing where the hind quarter is by knowing where the fore quarter is. Your trot is the two beat gait, so you know that when the foreleg, the inside foreleg, in this case Katie's white leg, when that hits the ground, you know that the outside hind leg is hitting the ground, and that's the one we want your horse to push off on for that departure. That again is going to give your horse a nice balanced departure. That's why I'm talking about using the four quarters because you have that point of reference of seeing these shoulders moving back and forth. You can also hear the, the footfall if you listen, and you should be able to differentiate you know, between your horse's left side and your right side. In conclusion, for the riding section of rhythm, timing, and footfall, I'm going to just take things in the opposite direction. The entire time, this time, I was talking about the white leg being in the air on the ground. But now I'm simply just going to review what we've done by going in direction right. So now when the red leg is in the air, that's when I want to cue and cue and cue and then straighten as the white leg is in the air on the opposite foot. So as I get to my turn, again, I would say we're going to turn now as the red leg is in the air now. It's in the air now. And then I can say white leg, which gets her to straighten her body and realize that the turn is over. Again, as we're turning, when the red leg is in the air, which is now and now. If I want to push her off my leg, that red leg hits the ground now and now and now. Good girl. Now, if I want to pick up my trot, when the white leg hits, I'm squeezing my legs and squeezing my legs. Good girl. Because, again, I'm deducing where my horse's uh, hind legs are by looking at that foreleg. So at the trot, again, when that red leg is in the air, it's squeeze, squeeze, good girl. And I'm using a whole combination of direct rein, inside outside rein, a little bit of neck reining. It's in the air, air, good girl. As I come to the rail this time, I'll press her over off my leg. And we're going to turn, turn, and now press, press, easy girl, good girl. Move her off my leg just a little bit. She's a little bit wound up from her little loping session and I'm posting again so again I can post as I or cue as I sit sit good girl so if I know I'm on the correct post lead cue cue good girl and ask for my transition so there you have it that's the riding section just getting familiar with the rhythm timing and footfall of riding your horse it is the kindest thing that you can do for your riding these really are beginning and intermediate uh, steps. As you become more versed at this, you're going to think about those hindquarters a whole lot more. And it will make more sense to you when people say, no, no, you should be half halting or halting with the hind steps in order to, you know, halt those hind steps. But just to get started, getting used to the rhythm and the timing, the tempo is the big thing. Because even though your walk is a four-beat Kate, the tempo or the speed changes and you must adjust how you're steering your horse as they slow down and speed up. You do not just get to say, it's now, it's now, it's now, because each time that you squeeze, your horse may slow down just a little bit. And that's why it's very difficult for people often to find their correct post leads. It's difficult to steer correctly, press your leg when the inside leg hits the ground, because your horse's tempo changes so much. But again, you've got the visual of your shoulders, your horse's shoulders moving back and forth, and that's where you want to start all of this out. Good luck with that. Footfall, emphasizing the diagonal. In this segment, we're going to analyze the walk, the trot, and then we'll take a look at the lope or the canter, and we'll also take a look at the backup all highlighting the importance of the diagonal. To begin, let's define that diagonal. A diagonal is a straight line which joins opposite corners of a square or a rectangle. And our horse's feet at the standstill are that rectangle. We'll start with the backup. 
I want to start with the backup because it's very easy to see the diagonal steps at the backup. And by that diagonal, I mean she's stepping with her white legs, and now her red legs, and now her white legs, red legs, until finally she comes to a halt on all four. And that diagonal is very important for your horse's balance. That's how your horse maintains balance in each gait. Now the trot. The trot has a very distinctive diagonal, just like the backup that we just saw. Here the trot is slowed down to about 50% and we have a freeze frame here so we can see the white diagonal legs and then there's a moment of suspension and then the red diagonals land. So here the right front and the left hind are on the ground for this diagonal and on her next step her left front and her right rear are on the ground for the white diagonal. And then it repeats again. Goes red and white. And that is the trot. It is the most obvious diagonally based gait. Moving on to the lope. At the lope, or the canter, there is just one diagonal right there with the red legs. So the strike foot is the white foot, the diagonal, and the completion step. The lope is a three beat gait with a moment of suspension right there. And then a strike foot, diagonal, leading foot. This is a left lead. It's considered a three beat gait. So after the moment of suspension, one, two, three, moment of suspension. Good. Now let's review. First, we looked at the diagonal at the backup. So we've got a red and a white, red and white. And at the trot, we have a red and a white diagonal. And at the lope, we have a red diagonal only. Completion step, strike step, diagonal, completion step. And now we're going to take a look at the walk, which is the most difficult gait to analyze. Let's slow the walk down so you can see how Katie's feet are moving here. She's going to step now with her left hind, left four, right hind, right four, left hind, left four, right hind, right four. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why didn't you put the wraps on her legs like this? Left, left, right, right, red, red, white, white. And the reason I don't leave the wraps like that is because I want you to see how the diagonal works at the walk. Here you see the red diagonal and how now she'll step to the white. And now there's a white diagonal. And now she'll step again to the red. Look, there's our red diagonal again. And then she's going to step again with two feet. One, two. And there's our white diagonal, red diagonal and a white diagonal, and again our red diagonal. So even at the walk, you can see how important this diagonal is to the balance and the gait of your horse. One last review. We've got our backup, white diagonal, red diagonal, white diagonal, red diagonal. At the trot, there's the red diagonal, and now the white diagonal red diagonal. At the lope, we've got our red diagonal and the completion step, strike step, diagonal, completion step, and now at the walk, again, we've got red diagonal and a white diagonal. A red diagonal, a white diagonal. Red diagonal, a white diagonal. And that is footfall emphasizing the diagonal. You're all done, Katie. Go get a carrot.